Welcome to Library and Research, What You Need to Know. This video will walk you through the essential information you need to know about finding and using scholarly sources to complete your assignment. In this video, you will learn how to develop a thesis, find keywords, use the library's resources, evaluate the sources you find, and how to properly cite sources in your assignment. Before you can begin your research, you need to develop a thesis. Without a thesis statement, your research will be much harder because you won't know what you're looking for. There are several different ways you can develop a thesis. First, what is the main idea you want to look at? You can narrow this down by looking at your assignment's requirements or picking a subject you're curious about. Then you can ask yourself what you want to argue or what question you want to answer. Next, pick your approach. Are you looking at something from a historical perspective? Do you want to conduct a survey or new research? Are you contrasting and comparing what information is already available? Are you simply seeking to inform your audience about the topic? The approach you choose can help you determine what research you need. Essentially, a thesis is the question you're trying to answer or the argument you're trying to make. A good thesis statement answers how or why and then gives reasons to support your viewpoint. Those reasons are the things you need to research. Keywords are the terms you use to find articles, books, or other pieces of information. Keywords are the main points of your thesis. The easiest way to find your first keywords is to underline the important words or terms in your thesis statement. Next, look at those words and think of other related words you could use. This is a great time to try thesaurus.com to find synonyms. You can also broaden or narrow your terms. For example, if you are writing a script for a podcast about Ethiopian food in the US, you can narrow your search to focus on just injera, the Ethiopian flatbread, or broaden your topic to look at immigrant food cultures. Finally, you can make specific examples keywords. For instance, if you are writing a paper about gentrification in Washington, DC, you can use certain neighborhoods like U Street or Columbia Heights as specific example keywords. This worksheet can help you find and develop keywords. It's very helpful to fill out something like this before you start searching for resources because you can refer to it for all of your different keywords. Then you can mix and match which words you use once you start looking for information. The library is your go-to place for research and resources. You can visit the library's website at UDC libguides.com. On our homepage, you will find UDC Search. This search box is a great place to start your research because it can help you find articles, books, and more. It also shows you what books are available at other local universities. To start using UDC Search, just put a few of your keywords into the search box and click Go. You will then be taken to the results page. UDC is a part of the Washington Research Library Consortium, or WRLC. This is a group of nine local universities that share books and online resources. By starting your research in UDC Search, you will see all the books and online resources that are available to you through these schools. On the results page, you will have the option to apply filters to the results. These work just like they do in Amazon, but instead of focusing on price, customer rating, or prime delivery, you can narrow by availability, subject, or date range. You can also limit to scholarly or peer-reviewed resources, which are required in many assignments. Once you have an item you like, you can click on the title to learn more. This page not only gives you more information about the item, but also links to it if it's available online. The record also links to related information, which can be a great way to find more resources. You can also email the record to yourself here. Even better, there is a built-in citation button that can show you all the ways the item could be cited in your bibliography or works cited page. UDC Search is not the only way to find information. The library subscribes to over 250 databases that are full of articles, eBooks, and media resources. You can see the full list by clicking on the A to Z resource list link, which is located below the UDC Search box. On the A to Z resource list page, you can see a list of all the databases you have access to while you are a student at UDC. You can find recommended databases by subject and type or see what is most popular. When you click on a database, you're taken directly to that database 
where you can begin your search. If you are trying to access a database from off campus, you will be asked to log in using your UDC email credentials. There are over 250 databases available to you, but these are some great databases to start your search. Credo Reference is sort of like Wikipedia, but it's scholarly. It includes summaries and introductory information about thousands of topics. It even tells you where you can find more information about your subject. JSTOR offers a lot of articles and ebooks and is easy to search by subject or topic. Academic Search Premier and ProQuest Multiple Database Search are both multi subject databases. They have a lot of information about everything. They're a great place to start your research because they can lead you to scholarly articles, newspapers, ebooks, and multimedia resources. Sometimes the results can be overwhelming, but you'll be able to see the breadth of information that is available to you. Each of the library's databases may look a little different, but they operate the same way. In each database, in this case, we're looking at Academic Search Premier, you'll be able to enter your keywords and apply filters to help you narrow down your search. It is recommended that you start with a broader search first, just a keyword or two, and then narrow down as you go. It's much easier to remove information than it is to add information. When you see the results of your search, you can read more about each resource and, if available, download the full text. Just like in UDC Search, you'll be able to email the information to yourself or cut and paste the citation for your bibliography or works cited page. Many databases also show you related information, so when you find an article you like, make sure to check out the related or recommended sources. When you're searching in the database, make sure to mix and match your keywords. You'll find different information each time. You should also try your searches in multiple databases since each database contains different information. If you ever get stuck, our online chat service is available in almost all the databases. Just pop in your question and one of our librarians will be available to help. You may need to do research on the open web through Google, social media, or other sources. When you need to use these sources, it's important to make sure the information you find is reliable. When you are researching on the web, it's important to be aware of the full context and authorship of the source. Some items may be misinformation. Misinformation is false or incorrect information that is distributed with the intent to deliberately deceive. It is intended to influence the actions and behaviors of others. Disinformation takes the form of fake rumors or propaganda distributed by groups in order to influence public opinion or obscure the truth. Malinformation is disturbing information that is shared for shock value and is intended to harm a targeted person or group. Bias is the prejudices that favor one person, group, or idea over others. Bias can come from political or personal beliefs. Bias also occurs from funding sources. It is important to know who is paying for the creation of information in order to know their true intent or purpose. Some information is created to entertain rather than inform. This information often exaggerates the facts in order to get more clicks. Once you have all your sources, no matter where you find them, it's important to evaluate the information. Why should you evaluate your sources? Not everything is good or appropriate for your needs. For every source you have, you should ask yourself, is it CRAP? CRAP is a method we use for evaluating resources. You can use this method to evaluate all of your sources, whether you found them through the library, Google, or anywhere else. Is the source current? How timely is the information? Do you need historical research or more current research? For example, if you're doing scientific research, you will want the most recent and up-to-date information. If you're looking at the trends of the vampire through literary history, you'll want a mix of historical and more current information. Is it relevant? Just because it was in your search results doesn't mean it's relevant to your assignment. It's also important to look at the intended audience. You don't want to use an article written for elementary school students in your college paper. Is it accurate? Is the information in the source reliable, truthful, and correct? Are there spelling or grammar errors? Can you verify the claims in another source? Signs of any errors should make you think twice about using that source. Is it authoritative? Who wrote the piece? Do they have expertise or experience in the area? Are they biased or trying to get you to buy something? 
What are the privileges of the author? Who wrote the information is just as important as what they're saying. The reason you shouldn't use Wikipedia is because anyone can update it. Also, lived experience can sometimes be just as good as an academic credential. It's always important to consider balancing perspectives to get the whole story. What is the purpose of the information? Are there political, ideological, cultural, religious, institutional, or personal biases? Is the information designed to teach, inform, sell, persuade, or entertain? Is the information fact, opinion, or propaganda? All information is shared for a reason. You need to look at those reasons to help you determine if they fit with your research need. Once you've found your sources and evaluated if you should use them, it's time to make sure that you include them correctly in your assignment. You may find citations annoying, but there's something that you already do. Anytime you tell someone, I read it here, or I heard it from so-and-so, you're showing where you got your information. We cite information for many reasons. First, we want to give credit to the other authors and creators whose work we are using. Your research and work is building from their hard work. Next, it creates credibility and shows that you did the work. When you cite something, you're telling your audience that you have looked at the information that is out there and are adding to the scholarly conversation. It tells your audience that they can trust you. Finally, it helps you avoid plagiarism. Plagiarism is when you intentionally or not pass off someone else's work as your own. This can include directly copying text or simply rewording someone else's work. When you include a citation, you're showing where you found your information and are showing that it is not your original work. It is important to provide a citation whenever you use work that you have not created. That includes any time you quote, paraphrase, or summarize information from a source. It also includes any time you use someone else's data, facts, charts, and graphs. You should also provide a citation whenever you include an image or picture that you did not take or create. Essentially, if you didn't make it, think it, or do it, you should include a citation. There are two parts of a citation. First is the in-text citation. This is the parenthetical reference or footnote included within the text of your paper. The second part is the bibliography or works cited page. This includes the complete information about your source. That may include the title, author, journal or website name, date of publication, and URL. Every source requires a different citation, so it's important to look at how you cite a book versus how you cite an article, podcast, or tweet. Luckily, when it comes to creating citations, there are great options to help you. Purdue OWL is a website that can walk you through all the parts of creating and using citations. It even includes a style guide showing you how to build the two parts of different citations for different kinds of sources. UDC Search and most of the library databases also have built-in cite buttons. When you click that option, the tool will show you how to cite that specific source in your bibliography or works cited page. It won't show you how to create the in-text citation, but at least it will show where periods go and what needs to be italicized in your reference list. Developing your library and research skills is an ongoing process. If you'd like even more information about using library resources and conducting research, you can contact us, visit our YouTube page for more tutorials, or check out our online help guides. All these options will give you more information that can help you complete your research. Thanks for watching.